All right, so we know our two main inferential tasks are doing confidence intervals, asking what are some other reasonable values we could have observed, and hypothesis tests, how different is this number from zero? Um, and we're going to need to know how to um, do those things for a particular slope. So I just want to show you on a, a piece of technology output um, the sorts of things that you would be able to see. So this is technology output from R, which is a programming language for statistics. Um, and it has this column uh, which says estimate. And these are the estimates for the intercept and the slope. So remember, we had our volume hat is equal to 99.6 plus 4.8 times average temp that we could have found from R. And then uh, R is also going to give us this column, which is the standard error. And this has the standard error for the intercept and the standard error for the slope. So I'm not going to ask you to compute the standard error by hand, uh, like I did for an individual uh, proportion or an individual mean. Um, that would be something that you would find from technology. So let's think about doing a confidence interval for the slope. Um, in this case, we're doing a distributional approximation, and we're using the t-distribution. And we've got our point estimate plus or minus our critical value times our standard error. I will give you the point estimate um, and the standard error from technology. You're going to have to know how to read it, um, but you will be given those numbers. And then the main thing that you're going to need to do is find the critical T star value from a T distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. So let's try an example. We're going to try and find a 95% confidence interval for the slope in that rail trail example. Um, and I'm going to pull out the numbers that I need. So I've got my B1 and I've got my SE. And so I've got, you know, B1 plus or minus T star times my standard error. And my B1 is 4.802 plus or minus T star times 1.084. So then the thing that you need to find is a critical t value uh, with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. And in this case, n is equal to 90. And so n minus 2 is 90 minus 2 is 88. And it turns out that is also given to you by technology. So it says 88 degrees of freedom. Um, so that's what we're going to use for our degrees of freedom. And to find that critical value, we need to go to stat key. So if we're on stat key, we go to theoretical distributions, t distribution, and then it asks me for my degrees of freedom. That's 88. And then I'm going to hit the two tail button, and I'm going to use this critical value of 1.987. I'm just going to move things to give myself a little more room. So now I've got 4.802 plus or minus 1.987 times 1.084, and that's 4.802 plus or minus 2.15. And so if I've got 4.802 minus 2.15, that's 2.652. And 4.802 plus 2.15, that's 6.952. So let's interpret that interval. I could say I am 95% confident. And now I'm going to plug in my interpretation sentence that goes with the slope that a one unit, and what are units in this case, at, uh, degrees, so a one degree increase in temperature is associated with an increase in the volume of between, and now I'm going to round, so 2.652, that's about three people, and 6.952, that's about seven people, between three and seven people. So that's what a confidence interval for the slope means, um, that I'm 95% confident that a one degree increase in temperature is going to be associated with an increase in the volume, the number of people on the rail trail, 
between three and seven people. 